driving doesn't feel dangerous in India to me. It all flows quite nicely. There's no high speed shenanigans. There's no people doing donuts or any of that. <laughs> so if you're checking your mirrors, you should be okay. You don't need to check your mirror in. in oh in, really? No, because they'll blow the horn. All oh, right, that's, that's <laughs> it's fine. You can rely on the horn. The horn is courtesy. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of driving, with Top Gear being axed, we're lacking a motoring show at the moment. Would you say you can have more than one car show? I think it's quite healthy too. And I think cars currently are a very interesting topic for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> Let's welcome to the show, uh, the friend of the show, the brilliant James May. James, welcome back. Thank you very much. Let's talk about you being our man in India. This is now your, your third trip, Japan, Italy and now India. A slight crossover with with the Grand Tour would, would be your trip in the auto rickshaw at the beginning uh, of the first episode. Where does that compare uh, with some of the hairier moments that we have seen and the interests you've picked up? Oh, well, I would say the Indian auto rickshaw, they, they are driven, the polite word would be, enthusiastically <laughs> and I, I feel quite safe saying that because a lot of Indians have agreed with me I you know I tweeted something about it and they said yes you're absolutely right they're they're not not suicidal but th- th- yeah vigorous, <laughs> vigorous. I'm really I'm being so careful about what I say they're lunatics that's what I'm trying to say um, but I don't actually I mean Aditi was going on about how they're unstable and they can fall over but I've never felt that and I've driven one as well in the in the past uh, it's basically a Piaggio Ape, like the Italians use for the little delivery trucks. I mean, uh-huh. the first ones were licensed built Piaggios, I believe. And they, they're, well, I mean, there's no crash protection, obviously, <laughs> but I did, they don't feel, driving doesn't feel dangerous in India to me. It all flows quite nicely, doesn't go too fast. It's just, you know, it's it's quite, it's noisy. There's yep. a lot of horn blowing, but it's it's quite relaxed. There's no There's no rage, there's... There's no high speed shenanigans. There's no people doing donuts or any of that. <laughs> so nonsense. if you're checking your mirrors, you should be okay. I don't. You don't need to check your mirror in. in, in oh in, really? No, because they'll blow the horn. All oh, right, that's, that's <laughs> fine. You can rely on the horn. The horn is courtesy. <laughs> you know, and, and speaking of driving, obviously with, with uh, Top Gear being axed, would you say there's uh, now a gap in the market? We're, we're lacking a, mo- a motoring show at the moment. Would you say? Well, you're not lacking ours because we've still got two big specials. To, to air, mm-hmm. drop whatever we do in whatever in the, the word is these world. days. Yeah. Um, I would be. I mean, it's nothing to do with me anymore, and I'm sure they're not interested in my opinion. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write it off forever if I were the BBC. I mean, apart from anything else, you can't. You can have more than one car show. I think it's quite healthy too. Mm-hmm. And I think cars currently are are a very interesting topic for all sorts of reasons. We we haven't scrutinised car use and the way cars are made and the way they're driven and the way they're powered this carefully since I think the car was invented. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting time to talk about it. Now, that probably means a slightly more consumer orientated and slightly more serious programme than us three have been making for quite a long time because ours is really a sort of sitcom <laughs> pantomime stroke circus travelogue <laughs> thing. Um, Love story. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're really stretching it. <laughs> but uh, I, I think there is room for some reasonably serious discussion about cars. So um, let's see. It's not going to be us three though. I think we're, we've done it. We've had an incredible run at it but it's you know we have to land it carefully at some point and that point is approaching how much does food play a part in choosing your destinations it's interesting i think there is a special relationship between britain and india um and i think for our part for the part of the british it's it is a lot to do with the food Mm. indian food there's a lot more to india than the food it's actually been around a very long time if you read the history of this stuff but mainstream uh, popularization of Indian food, I suppose, started in the second half of the 70s, I would guess. Are we talking Balti, the invention of the Balti and yeah. all that kind of stuff as well? Yeah, yes, t- to a certain extent. And also the, the sort of the formula British Indian curries, which I tend to think of as a slightly separate strain of Indian food from the Indian food you get in India. What do you normally have then? What would be your order if you went to an Indian restaurant, James? Oh, probably a biryani, which is actually mm. a, a real Indian thing. They eat a lot of that, it turns out. It's probably a biryani or, or it would be, you know, one of the old school things like butter chicken. Oh, I love a British butter chicken. That's, good, that's my go-to curry. He's Mr. He's Mr. Butter Chicken. He's known on this show. <laughs> and people, the people mock me for its mildness, but um, <laughs> it's it's fantastic, and it, it, well, it's, it's on the menu at an Indian mild. restaurant. Yeah, yes, it's, it's often, and it's often sort of. I mean, I don't think I don't think I've ever had a, a hot 
buttered chicken. But actually, Indian food on the whole isn't really as hot as we believe it yeah. is. That's a bit of a hangover from the days when when foreign food was, was dare food mm. in Britain, yeah. I think. You have to remember, we went from essentially a, a sort of post-war diet of boiled potatoes and meat to... Good old days. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then we had things like Chinese, and then we had Indian, and it's an incredibly exotic thing for the British people. Yeah. So, um, but it, in India, you find that a lot of the food is flavoursome and spicy, but not necessarily hot. If we have this idea in Britain that you, you go to India and you'll constantly be on fire yeah. and having to drink a lassie because of the food, but it's not true. Most of it's quite gentle. As a lover of cricket, which I believe is a recognised religion uh, mm. in India, uh, how, much, uh, <laughs> how much of that did you in reality experience uh, as you, as you travelled from coast to coast? A, a lot of people talking about cricket. Now, I know, I know nothing about cricket. I'm not even sure I know the rules. Um, <laughs> I don't really know very much about sport and I don't really do it and never have. But yes, they do talk about it a lot. And there is a scene where we go to the world's biggest manufacturer of cricket kit, which oh, I like because it's woodwork, basically, and I like things being made. Making your own box, for yeah, example. Exactly. And, and imprinting my own balls. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. That's a bit obvious, isn't it? Uh, but the, don't apologise. And then we had a game, we invented a game of cricket because obviously things have to be brief on telly, can't go on as long as a real cricket match. So we invented the One Ball International. Is, <laughs> so I was playing against Vikram, my guide, and we had, we could bowl one ball against each other, and I won. <laughs> At some point, I can, I can admit that we faked it a bit, but I won't do that yet. <laughs> I mean, t- talking of sport and events, etc., I mean, I, I, was, I was always a big fan of Robot Wars, and it's kind of a shame that Robot Wars is not, not around on telly anymore now. But there's something that came up in the first episode that could be a new Channel 5 programme, and that is kite fighting yes. that you got involved with. What an amazing yes. sport that is. Tell us about that. It is, and the thing that surprised me, so when I was a kid, um, there was a big stunt kite craze with the, the two-string kites that you could manoeuvre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could make them do sort of draw circles and figures of eight in the sky. And I assumed that their kite fighting would be like that, but they're not. They're single string kites. So you think, well, how do you, you can't manoeuvre that? It just flies in the wind. But that's not true, as it turns out. They can manoeuvre them with sort of little subtle tugs and releases. And eventually they, they play some versions where the strings are actually coated with glue and effectively fibreglass shards. Wow. So they're very sharp. So you, the idea is that you cut the other kite string, not, not the kite. And that's great. That's amazing. It, but it's also quite dangerous oh. if you get in the way of the taut glass fibre, <laughs> lethal, thin, invisible <laughs> string thing <laughs> that can take your finger off. Yeah, well, just what an amazing new sport. Never heard of it. Yeah, I know. I've not seen it like that. And I, I did start thinking, well, do the colours of the kites, does it spell out a message a bit like semaphore flags? <laughs> you know, is he saying... <laughs> I'll be home in an hour and a half. You do make our show go wonderfully highbrow every time you appear (laughs) on it. We're very grateful for that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you say in the the very beginning of the the opening scene of uh, this new series that the Brits are uh, obsessed with India. Obviously, colonisation and the you know the colonies, the Raj, and all that kind of stuff plays a big role. It's it's ever present in your your travels around the country. Is this something that you wish you're almost like apologising for a little bit? Is it is it brought up? What, What what's the kind of scene over there with it? Well, I think so. I was hanging around with, for example, at the beginning. Aditi Mittal, who's a stand-up comedian, and it's given that she has a a British victim, and she's quite politicised anyway because she's a stand-up comic, and they they have to be. Yeah, she was going to bring it up, and and you knew it was her. coming. Yeah, I did. I was I was sort of braced and ready, and I knew it was going to come. But actually, I think for the most part, I'm not sure the Indians are hung up on it, right. particularly. Um, and, and when I, you know, there are some bits in India, like when I went on the Maharaja Express and a, and a hotel we stayed in in Darjeeling, they sort of play the the Heritage Raj card a bit. But I find it a little bit, not not, not because I'm sort of embarrassed about our history or anything, but it's just a bit corny now. Yeah. And it's not actually as good as real modern India. I I, I prefer the real thing. I'm not I'm not saying that to virtue signal or sound righteous or anything. Mm-hmm. I just think it's. It's more interesting and actually probably more authentic. Spoiler alert, and I don't think it's a big one, you do buy a belt uh, in this series. Yes. Uh, Now, I I have long mocked my friend here uh, about the fact he only owns one belt and has done for a long, long time. Um, how How many belts would you say it is fair for a man to own? How many does a man need? Okay. well, I think... 
Well, I mean, that's a very original question. I've never been asked that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think a man needs one belt. And in fact, I only had one as a child at school. But I think some people would say you need two because you need a black one and a brown one. Now, I've... Just go hard on both, it's fine. <laughs> I've got... Now I bought one from Deravi, I've got two belts, but I also, but this isn't on camera, I also bought one in Italy. Wow. La mia nuova cintura italiana. So actually, uh, this this whole... Belt man. The, you're, you're actually, it's not food in every country, it's buying a belt it's in every belt, country. Yeah. I didn't buy a belt in Japan, I didn't oh. think of that. Really. Well, there's always, we, we, you know, what could be the next thing, the next place to go, the place which does fantastic <laughs> belts, we imagine. Uh, you, yeah. you also want one South other bit... South America, I think, probably does. South American do crack, cracking belts. The, the one other bit of tech that was uh, it was it was in the series as well. Is this 360 camera, which up until this point I've only ever seen uh, Jeremy Vine <laughs> shouting yeah. at motorists. <laughs> yes. So you used it to have a walk around, is it Mumbai? Uh, yes, r- around Deravi, the so-called slum. So, yes. Yeah, so yeah. how how does it even work? Because you can see totally above you, but you can see everything except the top of your head, and it's very. I mean, I have used one a few times before, and I don't want to come across as a luddite or someone who doesn't embrace these new ideas. But it's very difficult if you've spent years doing that sort of thing with effectively a GoPro on a stick, (laughs) which points where you're pointing it, to get used to something that's looking all around, because you, there's a, if you watch very carefully, there's a bit where some kids come up and talk to me. And yes. I turn around and I try to point the camera at them, but of course you don't need to, because everything <laughs> is, is already there except you. But what does it look like, though? I don't understand what it even looks like, a 360 camera. Well, I mean, you can edit out some of it, um, but it looks like... It's sort of like having your head inside... One of those big... Um, sorry, that was my gut. Was that your tummy? Someone's yeah. tummy's making a really loud noise. I'm worrying it's me. Big. I know how much I've eaten today, and I, I need a bigger belt, uh, and it's not me. I had a burrito at lunchtime. I, I think it might be me. Podcast, it's, so it's, <laughs> me. Um, it's like it's It's like being in one of those, um, you know, IMAX cinemas, in effect. Wow. It's, it's that effect. Um, it's, it's a remarkable piece of kit, but it's also slightly... You've got to be careful because it is filming everything, including what's going on behind you. <laughs> OK. And the crew need to be careful because whatever gestures they're making behind you, <laughs> that is also coming out on the 360-degree camera. Amazing. Well, James, it's been yeah. brilliant to have you in. Always great. It's a great. pleasure always to come here. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. 